going on guys, it's Cal here from KR Savers and this is the overview video of the Ray Scavenger DIY FX prop kit. As most of you know, this was teased about a year ago and it's certainly been one of the most complex engineering projects I've ever done to the point where I had to collaborate with others such as Goth3 Designs and Denis Lukianov to bring what we have here today. So. This is the video to go through the kit, what you can expect to get from the kit, and possibly some frequently asked questions that some of you may have. Yeah, if I do miss anything in the video, feel free to leave a comment below, but let's jump right into it. So each kit will be presented in our standard presentation box, being one of the higher end kits that we make. Our standard matte black with the white wireframe finish. The kits are gonna be offered in two different options with regards to hilt finish. So you can buy one that's a clean kit, or you can buy one that's a weathered kit. Alongside those kits, you have the option of adding an Eco chassis, which is our standard functional PLA 3D printed chassis, or you can add the Goth3 Designs Master chassis, which is a far more intricate chassis with metal 3D printed parts and a lot of details. There's some clips on the YouTube channel already that will be showing what these master chassis look like. When you open the kit, the hilt will be almost fully assembled. The only accessories that you'll get is you'll get these two grip body pads, um, which go onto the grip section here, if I show you. Onto this grip section, they go on there. And you'll also get two screws in a bag. Uh, the screws aren't here right now, but it's just one M3 by 16 millimeter screw, the same style as what's on the hilt, and an M2 screw. That's for if you're gonna be installing the chassis. So if you're planning to have this as a display piece, you won't need those screws but they'll be in there anyway for you. What I recommend for, if you're planning to attach these, is I just get some double-sided adhesive tape. I'll put a link in the product item description and I just cut some rectangular strips and stick them onto the body. I've got a, another example of one that I've done earlier, which I'll just get out now. So this is one that I did already. I just cut some rectangular adhesive strips and put them on the body there, as you can see. Nicely and secure, and if you plan to add a cloth wrap or something, that will cover this grip area anyway, and hold it in place. Now, with regard to the cloth wrap, the hilts do not include the cloth wrap. If you look at the weathered version of the hilt that's offered by Multiverse Props, all of those cloth wraps are cut individually by hand and applied by hand. There's actually about three or four different cloth materials used for the prop to be accurate and unfortunately it just wasn't something feasible that I could get a large amount of in stock to be able to throw them in with these kits and also the the trouble is that there's a specific way of applying it unfortunately I don't have too much experience in applying these cloth wraps or making them look the way that they do so it was nice to be able to partner up with Josh from Multiverse Props to be able to offer that service I would say that if you're looking for a really accurate representation of the prop to choose the weather in option. Of course, it might not fit within everyone's budget right now, which is totally understandable, but you can buy the hilt clean as is like this, and then later down the line, you can always send it to Josh, or you can contact me if you're overseas and say, I need a bit of assistance in bringing this over to the UK to get it weathered, and I'll happily help you with that. Some of you may know already that we have a DHL import account. You can contact me, I can send you some labels, bill you for the labels, and at least it will come to me and I can give it to Josh. Now the great thing about this kit, obviously, which some of you know about, is the fact that it has a working mechanism. So you can see, you turn the neck here, and it opens and closes. This was obviously the, the most difficult part of the kit. And this is how it will come assembled. The reason why it was important to have these already assembled was because the labor and time involved in assembling these is, is quite a lot. If you have a look a bit closer, each of these are all individual screws. They're not uh, machined in or anything, they are genuine screws. All of these screws I, I had custom made. Uh, this is why this is such a, a troublesome run to do because every screw on this hill, every single one, needed to be a specific head diameter. It needed to be a certain color, like this black in process, certain lengths, uh, to be accurate to the prop. Because as you know, they usually 3D print a lot of these props rather than making functional ones that are, you know, made out of materials like aluminium. They usually just 3D print them or cast them and they do the job. And if you have a look inside, you've also got the, 
the opening mechanism, which is all designed in there, all screws in there as well. If you look a bit closely, I don't know if you can see, there's screws also underneath the pedals that attach these linear actuators. And you've got the blade plug also. So that one's not pushed in a bit. Got your blade plug, decorative blade plug there. And you've got your one inch emitter. So it does have a one inch emitter and it opens and closes like that. The way that the chassis works is, is that once you've opened it, like so, there is still some space here. So there's just about a millimeter. And when you press that, it will press the activation button. So when you open it, it'll be like, as soon as you hit that, you've pressed the activation button. When you want to turn it off, you'll be holding it. And as it starts to de-ignite or retract, sorry, you can move your finger back. So it can work with one uh, finger. These screws here around the gear mechanism attached to some nylon rings, which is to reduce friction for the inner sleeve, which pushes these linear actuators up. So be careful not to loosen these screws because if you do, those small nylon rings may fall out of the hilt and they're quite small. They're only about four or five millimeters in diameter. And uh, you don't want to lose those really because they they help to move that mechanism up and down nicely, as you can see. Now, if you have any real serious queries about how to disassemble this, don't try and do it just off the top of your head. You can just contact us and email us and say, Cal, I think I need to access this area or there's a problem. Can you help me out? And I'll let you know. As you can see, there's little um, stainless steel rods in there. They won't fall out, but they might move from time to time. They need to have that movement to be able to function like this, to have that play to be able to open and close. Like I said, this is an extremely difficult prop to recreate and it was honestly so much work and effort to get it to where it is. So some of you who may have queries asking whether or not it can be dueled with, things like that, don't use this prop to be dueling with. You know, you probably, you can swing it and tap it around, but if you imagine a blade sliding down while you've got this open and hitting these petals, they're so fragile, they're held with watch type screws, 1.6 screws, stuff like M1.6 and M1.2, you just don't want to risk it really. So you can obviously swing it around, it's absolutely fine, you can tap it and light dueling or whatever, or light swinging and sparring, but please don't try and take this and do some uh, crazy duel or fight. In terms of access to the inside, we've got a twist and lock mechanism, very really simple, you just like that. You've got these channels here and there's a small O-ring which provides the friction. If you feel that yours is a bit too loose, they're one millimeter by 30 millimeter O-rings, so you can also replace them over time if you find that the tension just isn't there anymore. Obviously, it's, um, if I hold these petals down a bit, it's nice and secure, it doesn't fall off. And you can hear from the, the pop, it's got some really good tension there. That's your pommel. Obviously, sound holes are there, which are actually accurate to the prop. They do, they do have these holes at the bottom of them. And you've got tons of room all the way up the sabre there. So that's just a little brief overview of the handle, how it will come clean, and if you didn't choose the weathering option. I'll move on to the weathered version now to give you a few more details as to how that looks, because I'm sure you guys will like it. So let's take a look. So this is the weathered kit. This is how you get it again in the same presentation box. However, if we just open this up, put that to one side, you can see that the hilt is completely weathered with the cloth wrap. So this is obviously accurate to what the, the prop looked like on screen. And we've also got the working mechanism, some dust detail accents, rust accents here, but obviously it opens nicely. Josh did a really great job weathering these. I've given him some feedback also to make it even better than what it is now. And again, you've got these small scuffs in places, these rusty and dusty areas opens again like that to be able to gain access to the inside. Nice and secure. That's just the blade plug. If I haven't mentioned already, the blade retention screw is one of these screws. One of them is longer than the other three, uh, obviously for holding your blade, because when you want to put the blade in, you open this up, slide your blade down, tighten the screw, and you can activate it like that. There is, like I said, other clips on the YouTube channel that you can take a look at if you want to see what this is like ignited. I've made them as separate clips just so you can look at them differently and enjoy them for what they are rather than me slicing them into this overview video because that's what I want this video to be, just an overview video. You've got the blade plug there as well. I'll just slide that back in and close it up. So that's what you can expect 
from the weathered option and like I said we've got the eco chassis and master chassis install kit unfortunately we're not going to be able to offer installs on these it's just not possible I haven't got the facilities or workforce to be able to offer that at the moment but we do have many recommended installers that we can put you in touch with based on your country if you're interested in buying the kit just shoot us a message prior to your purchase and say do you know any recommended installers and we can put you in touch with them the majority of you I assume will be coming from the United States so we've got plenty of recommended stores in the United States also in Europe as well so these could be installed for you with the kits that we provide if you wanted to add the kit because then you can give everything to the installer or we can ship it directly to the installer if you arrange it prior and they can just open everything straight out of the box no need to buy any parts they've got everything they need you'll essentially just be paying the labor so the way that the run's going to work as many of you know usually what i do is i produce all the hilts make them get them here check them and then i'll announce a date and a time as to when they'll be for sale ready to ship obviously we're going to be offering weathering options on these so they're going to be about another 12 to 16 weeks because i anticipate that quite a few of these are going to sell and it gets done in a batch with multiverse props so he doesn't do one at a time and then send them to me he'll be weathering you know like 50 at a time and then he'll send me a batch of 50 and i can send those out to customers with the holiday season coming up and the shipping issues that usually happen around this time with delays i'm going to open this up for pre-order next week on black friday along with the ahsokas they'll be up for pre-order as well and the pre-order window will be open for the entire month up right up until boxing day so on boxing day the pre-orders will close and however many hilts have sold during that time will be allocated for the run now i've made enough of these I think that I've already paid for in advance if for any reason that quantity is exceeded which I don't think it will but if it does the pre-order will likely be pulled from the store temporarily and that and the listing will be re-uploaded with a lead time of how long it will be for those extra kits to be made so the initial batch is a few hundred so there's, there's, there's hundreds of them available and I'm very sure that we won't exceed that with the run so I'll keep a close eye on it obviously making sure that enough but I've already got and paid for all of these more than a year ago the batch and they've all started to arrive so a hundred of them have arrived to me so far the rest are coming over the next couple of weeks so if people choose clean kits without any chassis without any install kit or anything like that I might squeeze those orders out early and get them shipped first thing in January. I don't want to do any shipping in December because I will be taking time off in December uh, because these projects were so big it's just nice to be able to have a break now. So they'll go up for pre-order next Friday so you don't have to rush to get your order in. The order window will be open right up until Boxing Day. I'll be monitoring the quantities. If for any reason the amount that sells is more than the anticipated quantity it will just temporarily be taken down. A new listing will be put up explaining that this next batch will be produced in the new year and fulfilled later on but estimated shipping time for the clean kits is uh, end of january february because i'll be taking december off and then i'll start preparing the kits during january and shipping them out if more need to be made then it will obviously be longer but everyone will be made aware prior to that but like i said knowing how the sidious and the, uh, the princess Leia kit run went last year i made more than enough for those so I've done the same thing this time, so this should be fine. And I'm, I'm very confident that it is. But yeah, so this is the overview of the kit. If there's anything that I've missed, just let me know. I'll put links in the description of the listing when I've added it. So when this video is live, the link might not be there, but I'll be adding that later on this evening or on Monday so that you can read through some of the descriptions and see all the information there. But like I said, if there's anything I've missed, just let me know, leave a comment below. And I really look forward to seeing you guys next week for this run. I hope I've answered all the questions about everything. And uh, it should be a pretty exciting thing to finish off the year with. It's, uh, it's just nice to be able to see it finally come to fruition. And just want to say thanks as well to Goth3 Designs and Dennis Lukianov, who are obviously credited on the box for the excellent work that they did. Goth with the chassis and Dennis with his um, clever engineering techniques. It's been one of those things where, you know, I like to tackle difficult projects, but this one was a uh, next level. It really does mean a lot to be able to bring this to the lightsaber community, something that 
if you see it on screen, you probably wouldn't think there'd be a practical prop. You know, people have been asking me now if I'm gonna do spinning sabers like the, I think it's the Second Sister or the um, Inquisitor Saber from the animated series. And, you know, after doing this, I feel like that would be easier to do, but we'll see. Um, I've got some other projects that I'd like to get done first. That's the overview of the kit and explaining how the process will work. If you have any questions, just let me know and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace.